This is just pretty much your basic five tube AM clock radio. This is from 1956. But it's fairly unique in that it is was made by CBS. Now I believe this is the same CBS that uh, operates a bunch of radio stations and television stations, Columbia Broadcasting. And CBS Radio is one of the last major network radio uh, organizations or companies out there. And they, they had, and I had mentioned this in previous videos, they said that they were pretty much looking at selling off their radio division after the election because they see radio as a uh, non-growth opportunity or a non-growth business. And you can see here. So this radio was one of those uh, friend things where take a look at it when you uh, when you have time and I think the time is appropriate right now because I just saw an article where CBS radio was scaling back and it laid off a bunch of its longtime reporters. Um, I think it's hardly up for debate anymore that media is changing and radio and television news and such are dying. They are on the way out and citizen, citizen journalism and social media are replacing it. So I thought what we would do before CBS radio is dead and gone, you know, KNX, uh, KCBS, a whole bunch of them out here, K-Earth 101, pretty much the top five or ten English speaking radio stations in the LA basin here are owned by CBS. So before that is gone, I thought it would be neat to fix this CBS radio. Now I've worked on CBS televisions before and they're very well built, very heavy duty. So let's get into this. We'll do a diagnosis on it today. Uh, probably won't repair it because if I remember right I turned it on and it sounded like it had IF can silver mica disease. Could be wrong, we got to diagnose it, so let's uh, let's do that now. Alright, so, needs a new power cord. This is kind of unacceptable, but it'll do for right now. Okay, power's applied, the clock is dead. Volume is wide open. So this is from 1956. So it's actually having an anniversary right now. Okay, so the volume control regulates the static. We can turn the static down. So we know it's not in the uh, audio output stage. So we know it's uh, it's probably not, here's the volume right here. So it's probably not here or here. This radio uses a couplet, which most of these did, the later ones. And these are basically disc capacitors. So this noise is uh, typical of the, I, uh, the capacitors and the IF cans going bad. And let's see, you can see the IF can here. No, no, that's the couplet right here. IF can. See, there's capacitors there without values on them. There's four capacitors inside these two IF cans.
And this is Shango 066, and you should be watching this video on the Shango 066 YouTube channel. All right, let's tear it apart and see how we can diagnose this and prove this problem, which might be kind of tough because this one is so bad. All right, this is a fairly nicely built radio. It's on a all-metal chassis. Uh, and here are the IF transformers and you can see that they're slug tuned and what I mean by slug tuned I know most people know this but I'm gonna go over this step by step for people that might ha not have any clue what these terms are I'm using there's a a uh, powdered iron tunable core down in these holes and you stick an adjusting tool it's an allen screw usually down in there and you can adjust there's two cores in here in the in the tube with the coil wrapped around it and you adjust those cores up and down now the other style of IF can which are the bigger ones have two little screws in the top those the coil is fixed and the capacitors are tunable in these the capacitors are fixed and the coil is tunable so another step towards the suspicion of the capacitors being the cause of the uh, noise. And this thing actually has a all metal bottom. So let me figure out how to get this open. This is really nicely built. So this does not appear to have had any work done on it. And yes, those capacitors do need to go. But rather than shotgun them, I doubt those are what's causing the static. It could be possible that the AVC capacitor, which is, should be this one, is causing that noise. But I doubt it. There's no hum, so obviously the filter's okay. Um... What I would like to do with this is we'll take the signal tracer and since it's not tuning any stations I'm going to connect the signal tracer probably here and we'll see if the um, converter part is actually tuning stations and then we'll just follow it step by step. Alright here we go I got the signal tracer I'm gonna start over here Geez, this is so horrifically bad that, uh, damn. So I'm saying when it gets, the, when the noise gets so bad, it just feeds back through the whole thing and it, it, um, I think what I might want to do is cut this capacitor out of here. This is a 12AV6, the detector and uh, first audio.
Okay, I changed the 12 AV6. It's this one here. That's the third, that's the de the rectifier right there. I see arcing in the bottom of the IF can. See that there? Okay, so what I had done is I had grounded the output going from there into the uh, detector, and you can hear. Okay, well that pretty much solves that problem. Um, that is as solid of a diagnosis as you can do right there. So what I'm gonna do, the, the method I'm going to take is, I'm gonna take the cans apart, have to remove the cans out of the chassis, disassemble the cans, and clean the mica wafers out of the bottom. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to solder across the bottom variable capacitors. Now there's one of two ways of doing this. You can put the variable caps there, dial it in, take the caps off, measure them with a cap meter, uh, and then put fixed values that are close to that in there, and then tune it up with the slugs and dial it in. Or you could just put the, the caps there, the two adjustable caps and leave them. I'm not sure yet which way I'm going to go. The wrong way to do this is to say, oh well I'll just put a couple hundred picofarads in there. No, that's not the way it works. They're usually all different and they're usually not a hundred. You might be able to put a hundred in there and get it to work, but it's going to be deaf. It's not going to be nearly as sensitive as it should be from the factory. So I know some people in the past have said, well, I'll just put a hundred in there, or, you know, 112 or 110 or whatever they come in for AM. No, that's not the right way to do it. Here's what we're going to do. This will be video part one. Try and do video part two for next week, taking the IF cans off. And um, we'll do that step by step, how to recap the IF cans. But that's a perfect example of silver mica disease when you visibly see arcing inside the IF can. This one sets a precedent.